I, this weekend, I went to the cinema to see The Exorcist Believer. I've been trying to get through the uh, previous installments of The Exorcist franchise, the original movie, of course, uh, regarded as a masterpiece, although it's really not for me. Um, Exorcist to the Heretic, previously covered on the podcast. Exorcist 3 is an interesting attempt to push it in a new direction. It's written and directed by the author of the original novel, um, so it is more of a legitimate claim to being a direct sequel. I did see Exorcist the beginning when it was released in cinemas nearly 20 years ago, and uh, fortunately I didn't get the chance to rewatch it now. Nor did I have a chance to see Dominion, a prequel to The Exorcist, an alternate version of Exorcist the beginning, directed and written by Paul Schrader, whose original version of the film was thrown out and massively reshot by Rennie Harlan at the studio's insistence. There's also been a TV version running for two seasons, which is not great and completely runs out of ideas in its second season when it just turns out to be The Adventures of Roving Exorcists. So here we have Exorcist Belie The Exorcist Believer, co-written and directed by David Gordon Green, uh, who masterminded the recent trilogy of Halloween sequels, which I've raved about. I thought that Halloween 2018 was an astonishing piece of work. I was very impressed by Halloween Ends. I even thought Halloween Kills was pretty good and had some really interesting ideas. They're great movies, um, but it was an uphill struggle with The Exorcist Believer because I've never really engaged with the material. I'm not religious. Um, I feel that a lot of the time, in order to be scared by exorcist movies, you have to have some religious leanings within yourself, some religious faith, and I have none. So they're more um, thought experiments rather than anything else. Unfortunately, The Exorcist Believer is not even that. It is a very weak, dull, generic, uninteresting, flat, bland movie. It doesn't seem to be about anything. Um, the original film, as I say, it's I didn't find it scary, but I found it interesting because it had ideas about what place does faith have in the real world. If a demon possessed a child in our modern 21st century world, as it would be now, how would people react? How would people respond to such a uh, seemingly impossible circumstance? And I, I on honestly remember so little of the, this new film. It made so little impression on me that I can remember almost nothing about how the characters do react. Um, two young girls go missing um, and are found three days later, having apparently lost time. And it turns out that they are in fact possessed so the non-religious uh, single father of one and the religious parents of the other have to pool their resources, uh, contact Chris McNeil, whose daughter Reagan was possessed in the original film and who has made a career out of investigating exorcisms in cultures across the world since then, and ask for her advice. So we have Ellen Burstyn coming back. Uh, her scenes all filmed early in the production because she's 90 and COVID. And she really contributes very little. Um, I think as a as a problem with all her scenes being relatively easily removable. Um, there is just so little to say about this film. Um, the demon's motivation in the first film is to make the people around Reagan despair, to show humanity as being monstrous and ugly by corrupting this innocent young girl. But there is no sense of that depth or thought beyond the most superficial level in Believer. There is so little attempt at interrogating the concept, at expanding it beyond a very, very basic scare story. It's incredibly disappointing. Um, as I say, I, I don't really have a horse in this race. I wasn't really concerned about this being uh, the, the film that would tank the Exorcist franchise in the way that perhaps I might have been about the, the Halloween films. But it's it's so bad and so uninteresting. It's probably the worst film in the series, and it's the worst film in a series that contains Exorcist to the Heretic, because at least that has some original ideas. They're completely crazy, and it's a completely deranged film. But it's trying to do something interesting. It's trying to do something fresh and original and do so in an unusual, engaging way. This makes no effort 
we have barely engaged actors we have a boring script it's so bland it feels like a a, a tv movie launch pad for an exorcist tv series except the exorcist tv series is despite it being completely nonsensical and, and very lurid is better than this this is the worst film in a franchise which is notoriously filled with with terrible movies and terrible efforts um it's really not worth anybody's time i'm shocked that it's actually been released in the form that it is and i'm amazed that universal paid 400 million dollars for the rights to an exorcist sequel trilogy um as i'm speaking box office results are coming in for the opening weekend and they're not great it was a relatively inexpensive film and it's likely that it'll make a reasonable profit but reaction from critics and audiences has been so bad i would be genuinely shocked if this film actually gets any sequels in its incarnation as it is um i can't even see a reason for this film even to exist other than to exploit an existing ip with halloween there were ideas that it was developing there were concepts that it was looking into of how a town how a person is affected over a long period of time by the events of the original film the exorcist doesn't the exorcist believer i should say doesn't even bother transplanting those ideas into this new milieu it does nothing and it really merits exactly the same level of attention from you zero